Hello, it's Karen Berniston here with an assembly video for one of our die sets. This is die number 1129, the Gnome and Santa, and you can check out all of our die designs at KarenBerniston.com. There are 14 dice in the set. It is a great opportunity to use up some scraps. You can use any die cutting machine that can accommodate a wafer thin die, and I am using my little small Dress My Craft Easy Cuts machine. And I will start first with the Gnome assembly. There is a stencil feature for the face of the gnome or Santa, so just leave that paper in the die or put it back into the die, and then I just use a black pen to put on the eyes and the mouth. My favorite glue is Lineco Neutral pH Adhesive in my fine tip bottle. We do sell both of those items on our website, and glue is really the best bet for assembling these little characters. So I'm just adding on the beard and mustache piece and making sure that the mouth is just in the opening. There is a die in the set that cuts hands and noses all together. There are two noses. I like to use the bigger one when I'm making a gnome and the smaller one for Santa, but of course you could try it either way. And you can definitely do the gnome where you lower the hat down over the eyes completely. But then of course you can also put the hat on so that you can see the eyes. So just lots of ways to customize these little gnomes. There is a tiny little buckle die in the set. I like to just take a tool, a toothpick, or a paper piercer through the buckle to get the hole started, and then it's easier to slide the belt piece through the buckle. I think the spot where the belt and buckle fits the best is just a little bit tucked underneath the sleeves. And speaking of those sleeves, the curve in them matches the curve of the arms. So just a little glue on the arms, and then they can be tucked in there and glued to the back of the sleeves. There is a die in the set that cuts a pair of boots and those go on next just with a little glue at the top and then tucked behind. And then the head goes on to finish out the gnome. Now you can choose if you'd like to tilt that one way or the other or maybe lower it a little bit. So if you're making a whole series of gnomes you might change out the angle that you put the head on and then that's going to change the look of the gnome so they don't all look identical but then just secure the head to the body with a little bit of glue. And then that's going to finish out that basic assembly of the gnome. There are two dies in the set that will combine to make a mushroom. And that is of course optional, but looks really cute when the gnome is holding it. Okay, so now let's look at how to assemble the pieces as a Santa. The belt and the buckle go on exactly the same way. It's just a matter of changing out the colors to be Santa colors. There is a die in the set that will cut all of the white trim pieces for Santa's coat and hat at the same time. And so just a little glue at the bottom of the coat and then the two cuffs. And it's that long piece in the set that fits that coat just perfectly right along the bottom. So when I'm putting together die sets that have little small pieces like this, I find that a quick stick can be very helpful to just be able to pick up those little small pieces and then move them over into the glue. We do sell those quick stick tools on our website. There is also a die in the set that will cut a couple of tiny mittens. Now those could be glued up behind the cuffs if you want Santa to hold something, but if not, you can just put the glue on the belt and then just kind of tuck the end of the mitten up underneath the cuff. Just like with the gnome, I just add a little glue to the top of the boots and then put the coat over the top of that glue. Adding the trim pieces to the hat will make it look like Santa's hat. So some glue at the top, some glue at the bottom, and then those final two white pieces. Okay, putting together Santa's head is pretty much the same as with the gnome. So stencil feature for the face, then a little glue along the chin to add the beard. The hat can go at the top at whatever angle you would like. And then I'm going to finish it out with the smaller of the noses. But again, you could try it with both and see which one you like the best. And then just gluing the finished headpiece onto the body at whatever angle you would like. There are two dies in the set that will combine to make a cute little Christmas present. And if you didn't glue the mittens down, you can tuck that under the mittens and Santa can be holding the present. But another spot that looks really good is just attached kind of between the boot and the edge of the coat. 
Okay, it is true that there are a lot of small pieces in the Gnome and Santa set, but what's nice about that is that you get to customize. So you're always choosing your colors and your styling and the tilt of the head and how far down the hat is. You can double the mustache. That looks kind of cool because then you can kind of ink around the edges before you glue the second one on. You can also flip the hat over after die cutting and then it will be pointing the other way. Now the set was not intended to make a Mrs. Claus, but I just got to looking at the pieces and figured it would be pretty easy to make one. So here's how I did it. I started with the head and of course the bottom is very boxy, so I'll have to use my scissors to give her a proper rounded chin. I just used the stencil feature for the eyes and the mouth and just gave her some rosy cheeks with a colored pencil and then the smaller of the two noses. For her hair, I decided to cut two more of the head pieces out of white and didn't do any stenciling or anything on them. I'm just using them for their shape and I've just turned it sideways. So one head on either side will make the majority of her hair. And she's going to be wearing a hat, so I wasn't sure I needed any hair at the top, but I was looking at the side of the beard and realized that that could be a pretty good set of wispy bangs. So I just chopped a little section off of the side of the beard and then glued it at the top to be the bangs. If you'd like to make the Santa hat a little shorter, you can glue the trim piece on about halfway up and then just trim off the excess and that will make the Santa hat shorter. And for her hat, I also flipped that red piece over before I started trimming it so that it would actually point in the other direction. And I found the perfect set of glasses for Santa and Mrs. Claus in our Tiny Accessories 1 die set. Instead of a belt, I just added two of the little circles from the top of the hat as buttons on her coat and then a little present. So just a bonus idea for how you can make Mrs. Claus. The gnome is really the perfect size to fit on all of our pop-ups, including the new flip frame pop-up. I love how Kelly Booth has used her Copic markers to shade in the beards of her gnomes on this really cute flip frame pop-up card. And I love all of the bright, happy colors that Kelly used on this card. And then here's another flip frame card by Kelly Booth, and again with the shading on the beard, and this time she added those glasses from Tiny Accessories 1. For Karen Aiken's gnome on the front of the shaker card, she used a white gel pen to add some detailing. And then an oval frames pop-up card by Karen Aiken, and again she's done her white gel pen styling on the gnomes. Lois Bach shows how you could combine the gnome and Santa set with our new backyard charms, and that's where the snail and the fairy and the larger mushroom came from. The gnome and Santa die set is available for pre-order now from our website, as well as a lot of your favorite online and local retailers. Shipping starts August 3rd, 2020. Thanks for watching. If you click on the website link, you'll go to KarenBerniston.com where you can find out information about purchasing these dies as well as links to all my other social media accounts. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.